the greatest assembly of them all. Once a year, Stranger Danger. Yeah, the hottest ticket in town. The Bruno Mars of assemblies. You are gathered together as a school, and you are told never to talk to an adult that you don't know. And you are told this by an adult that you don't know. We had the same Stranger Danger speaker every year when I was a kid. His name was Detective J.J. Bittenbinder. Go ahead and laugh, his name is ridiculous. That was his name, it was J.J. Bittenbinder. He was from the Chicago Police Department. He was a child homicide expert. And, oh, gee. Oh, very sorry, Radio City. Did that make you uncomfortable? Well, guess what? You're adults, and he's not even here. So try being seven years old, and you're sitting five feet away from him. He's still got blood on his shoes. And he's looking at you in the eye to tell you for the first time in your very young life that some adults find you incredibly attractive. <laughs> and they may just have to kill you over it. Okay, say la vie, go be kids, go have fun. Bittenbinder came every year. By the way, Detective J.J. Bittenbinder wore three-piece suits. He also wore a pocket watch. Two years in a row, he wore a cowboy hat. He also had a huge handlebar mustache. None of that matters, but it's important to me that you know that. <laughs> he did not look like his job description. He looked like he should be the conductor on a locomotive powered by confetti, but instead he made his living in murder. He was the weirdest guy damn person I ever saw in my entire life. He was a man most acquainted with misery. He could look at a child and guess the price of their coffin. <laughs> that line never gets a laugh, but once you write it, it stays in the act forever. <laughs> so Bittenbinder came every year with a program to teach us about the violent world waiting for us outside the school gym. And that program was called Street Smarts! Time for street smarts with Detective J.J. Bittenbinder. Shut up, you're all gonna die. Street smarts. That was the general tone. He would give us tips to deal with crime. I will share some of the tips with you this evening. Okay, tip number one, street smarts. Let's say a guy pulls a knife on you to mug you, because you remember the scourge of muggings when you were in second and third grade? You know how a mugger thinks, man, I need cash for drugs right now. Hey, maybe that eight-year-old with the guy Aladdin wallet that only has blank photo laminate pages in it will be able to help. <laughs> Let's say a guy pulls a knife on you to mug you. What do you do? You go fumbling for your wallet, and you go fumbling for your wallet. Well, in that split second, that's when he's gonna stab you. So here's what you do. You kids get yourselves a money clip, okay? You can get these at any haberdashery. You put a $50 bill in the money clip. Then, when a guy flashes a blade, you go, you want my money? Go get it. Then you run the other direction. And our teachers were like, write that down. They're like, buy a money clip? Engraved, question mark? You go home to your parents, hey, dad, can I have a silver money clip with a $50 bill in it, please? Don't worry, I'm only gonna chuck it into the gutter and run away at the first sign of trouble. The man with the mustache told me to do it. <laughs> Tip number two, street smart. <laughs> Let's say a kidnapper throws you in the back of a trunk. This was at nine in the morning. <laughs> Let's say a kidnapper throws you in the back of a trunk. Don't panic. <laughs> Once you get your bearings, find the carpet that covers the tail light. Peel back the carpet, make a fist, punch the tail light out the back of the car, thus creating a hole in the back of the automobile. Then stick your little hand out and wave to oncoming motorists to let them know that something hinky is going on. Can you imagine driving behind that? Like...
I think they're turning left. <laughs> Tip number three, straight smarts. <laughs> you kids have no upper body strength. And we were like, we know, but hey. If some guy tries to grab you, you can't fight him with fists. So here's what you do. You kids fall down on your back and you kick upward at him. That'll throw him off his rhythm. That was a big thing with Bittenbinder, was throwing pedophiles off their rhythm. <laughs> He's not gonna know how to fight back with two little sneakers coming at him. <laughs> if the Lindbergh baby had steel toe boots, he'd still be alive today. Street smarts. Yeah, he was not a spoonful of sugar helps the medicine go down kind of guy. He was more like, brush your teeth. Now, boom, orange juice. That's life. <laughs> Bittenbinder, he didn't want us to not get kidnapped. He wanted us to almost get kidnapped <laughs> and then fight the guy off using weird psych-out backroom Chicago violence. Like, here's what he wanted to see on the news. Like, we're here with seven-year-old John Mullaney, who fended off a kidnapper earlier today. How did you do it, John? Well, thank you for asking. I used the bit and binder method. When I saw the perp approaching, I chewed up a tab of Alka-Seltzer I carry with me at all times. This created a foaming at the mouth appearance that made it look like I had rabies. Now I've thrown him off his rhythm. Then I reach into his jacket pocket where I had planted a gram of coke and I went, whoa, what the f is this? And he goes, that's not mine. And I never seen that before. I go, boo hoo, it's in your jacket. And you're doing two to 10 and your kids are going into social services. Now he's crying. Then I grab a telephone book and I beat him on the torso with it. Because as any Chicago cop will tell you, a phone book doesn't leave bruises. <laughs> well, that was seven-year-old John Mullaney <laughs> currently being sued for police brutality. <laughs> Bittenbinder, Bittenbinder told me things that haunt me to this day. He came one year for, for assembly. He goes, okay, when you get kidnapped, not if, when. <laughs> okay, so when you get kidnapped, the place where the guy grabs you. In the biz, we call that the primary location, okay? Your odds of coming back to the primary location, about 60%. <laughs> but if you are taken to a secondary location, your odds of coming back alive are slim to none. I am 35 years old, and I am still terrified of secondary <laughs> locations. If I'm at a place, I never want to go to another place. I'll be at a wedding reception and someone will be like, hey, you coming to the hotel bar after? We're all gonna get drinks and keep the party going. I'm like, nah, 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 sister. You're not getting me to no secondary location. You want it? Go get it. Street smarts. Stay alert out there.